Hi everyone, my name is King IV and this is a custom ACL workshop. In today's workshop, I'm going to be showing a very popular technique uh, within identifying duplicate invoices. The technique is called same, 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 or at least that's the one I use, uh, where it looks at does multiple invoices have the same vendor, the same vendor date, vendor amount, and then invoice number. And then we apply a different technique where we go same, same, D, different, uh, same, same, different, same, but we'll go over those details. So I have some AP transactions that were provided by ACL. So thank you, ACL, for that. And within this AP transaction, uh, there's some interesting fields here. The ones we care about here are this vendor document number, this vendor name. Some people use the vendor ID. Uh, but I prefer to use the name. Uh, the You always want to use the foreign currency amount or the original currency amount because this is super important, especially if the transactions get processed on different days, then that may impact whether or not the amounts are the same. It may not matter, but it's just better to, to use it. And then as well, we want to use the, the document date here. So let's go ahead and get started. So I have some AP transactions here. I'm going to open open up this AP transaction table and then I'm going to define a couple of fields for myself. So I'm going to go uh, text rec num, which is going to give me the record number just so I can use that to keep track of my analysis in each record. So I'm just going to use the rec no function. If you haven't checked out that video, I recommend that you check it out. I'm going to include a little card caption right now so you can go check it out. Uh, so let's go ahead and define some of the other fields. So let's start with the vendor and then I'm going to pull out the name and then we're going to pull out let's do the invoice number and we want to have the invoice number that is associated with the, the vendor. We don't want the internal invoice number that's usually track, kept track. You want to look at the one that it would be found on if you were to pull up the actual invoice. So you'll see here, usually it's not in sequential uh, numeric order. Uh, so here we are also going to include, let's include the invoice date. So if we go over here and we want to find the date that the invoice was from, not when we received it, because that's going to be super important. And the reason why is that if a vendor sends us the invoice again, the same invoice again, obviously if we use the date that we received it, it's going to be a different day than the actual invoice date, as opposed to if they've sent it twice or if we've processed it twice to allow us to, to capture that. And then we'll call this num invoice amount. Find field num invoice amount computed. And then I'm going to go over here. And again, we're going to use the foreign currency or original currency amount. And this will cre increase our likelihood that we are going to find this duplicate. And then here, what I like to do to avoid the rec num from changing is I like to extract it fields all to Let's call it AP scope. Then so let's go ahead and run that just so we can see what it looks like. Perfect. So now next thing we're going to do now is we're going to start using our duplicates function, a really useful function. And I'm not sure if I created a video on this, but hopefully everyone gets the concept here. It's pretty straightforward. So here we're going to list out the fields that we want to include. So in this case, we want to include, we're going to do this is going to be the same, same, same. Uh, in this case, it's going to be, we're going to call it vendor invoice number date and amount. Just so that you know what each of the, the characters correspond with. So here we're going to go text uh, vendor 
Then we're going to text invoice number, DT invoice date, and then num invoice amount. And then I'm going to include all other fields just so we can have a look at them. And then here I'm going to call this duplicates 01.fill pre-sort open. So unlike extract or summarization, you have to include .fill file just because the default out output is not a .fill file, not an ACL table. It's usually a text file, uh, but that's not what we want to do here. We want to keep it within ACL so we can run the analysis. So here, if we take a look here, you'll see that these lines are exactly duplicated, but you can see the transaction ID are different. So you can see here, there's some really interesting findings here where they're already duplicated. doesn't mean that necessarily they are duplicates. There could be an instance where a vendor invoices us twice, uh, potentially because they invoice one uh, business unit and then invoice the same amount for the other business unit where the business units are splitting in half, for example. Uh, but these are good indications. These are good transactions for us to investigate. In this case, there's a pretty small transaction base, 2, 000, no, 1,200 records. But if you can isolate and pick any 16 that you're going to help identify duplicates, this is really useful. So let's go ahead and keep plugging away here. Uh, so I'm going to then open up this table. And now we're going to run the other analysis. So what I mean by here is we're going to run... Let's do this. So we're going to do same, 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 different. So different invoice amount. And we need to do this in two steps. So I'm going to here, I'm going to call it uh, duplicate two temp. And the reason why is that when we run this, it's also going to include all the ones in one because now there's one less criteria to check. So how we're going to combat that is then I'm going to open up duplicate zero one as secondary. And then I'm going to just do a quick join on text recnum, which is why I include this field because it's super useful to compare the records and go text recnum without, uh, because there may be considerations. Well, you, you could tell like, well, King, why can't you just use the vendor invoice number date? You can, but it's just not going to be as universal. And you're going to see how much quicker it is for us to run this analysis. So we're going to call this duplicates zero two. Uh, resort, sex sort, open. So you can see now we have these new set of duplicates uh, where everything but the vendor name, the invoice number, and the date are the same, but the amounts are different. Oh, sorry, I've got to uh, include unmatched here. Apologize. This is why it's always good to double check and test out your code. So you can see here, for example, the these three lines are, sorry, not the, yeah, no, it's, that should be correct. Um, let's change this up. Okay, so we see here, when we act, when we did the pre-sort, it didn't work out exactly perfectly because of the rec num, but you'll get the idea when you once you sort it. So you'll see here, for example, the vendor, the invoice number and the date are all the same, but the amounts are different here and they're slightly different, but you can see the LC amount are, are very different here. So obviously this one does tend to kick out a lot of false positives, um, but still in my opinion, very useful and just one other way to help assess it. So here we're going to include, we're just going to exclude the invoice date. And this is very. This one's a really good one to catch. This is a good one to catch as well in case there's someone mistypes a number, transposes a number, mistakes a six for a nine, or flips some numbers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Or they include tax one time, but they don't include tax the other time. So you can see how easy it is to update it once we've run this analysis. Once we've created this script, so you can see here these. Okay, just because of the way we sorted it. So you can see here. Oh, there's a lot of duplicates here. Maybe I'll sort it here this way. So all right, let's sort it largest. So you'll see here, these ones contain the same, but the dates are different. And obviously this may be an instance where we get the same repeat bill over and over again, but still something to, to look at, uh, something that still could be useful.
So let's go ahead, go down here. Let's call it seems. Let's go to the second one. So in this case, we're gonna have a different invoice number, but the same, same vendor, same, uh, same vendor, same date, and then as well the same amount. So let's see what this one kicks out. So you can see here. Let me just sort this. Uh, you can see here. Uh, same vendor, same day, same amount, uh, but different. Different invoice number. And you can see here it's slightly different. It's incremented differently. Uh, could be a case, and this is a very popular one. In case someone puts it puts, for example, zero zero one, or someone puts one as the invoice number. And we're gonna go through the last one, which is actually my personal favorite besides the first one. And I find it's a really effective way of catching duplicates is when the vendor name is different. Especially a lot of places have very poor, uh, have really poor vendor information or they don't clean up their vendor information very often. So they intend to have duplicate vendors. So if we run that, you'll see here. Oh, well, nothing kicked out. It looks like we've maintained our our vendor record pretty well. Obviously, this is this is um, like a pretty small data set, but you can see how this is all very useful. Then you can extract, combine it, do all this stuff, and really isolate your list from twelve hundred vendors, twelve hundred potential duplicates to this thirty, forty, a hundred. Even if it's even if you go from twelve hundred to two hundred. You're, you're increasing your likelihood of actually finding a potential duplicate than just randomly sampling by a very wide margin. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Uh, if you like this video or you found it useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And I look forward to speaking to you next time. Thank you.